This is Studio 22A, and this is part 3 of my 3 part series where I've shown you how to take this render from Lumion and post process it in Photoshop to create this render and collage hybrid. So right away we're going to go into this file that I've set up in Photoshop. The first thing you might notice if you've watched the first two videos is there's this new group on the right called weathering. So these are just cutouts or you can call them decals of the natural weathering that you'd find on concrete materials. I added this in onto all the concrete surfaces just to add an extra bit of detail since I wanted this to be the final and most detailed image out of the three videos. And if anyone was interested in learning about how I did this or how I created these decals and put them on a surface, uh, that could definitely be a future video. So just let me know. So we'll just move into the desaturation layer that I've got going on. Um, the main focus of this is going to of this image is actually going to be about sort of the colors that are going to pop out and um, the collage elements that we're going to add to it. So we're just going to desaturate the entire render that's in the background. And once we've done that, I'll move into the uh, brushes that I'm using here. So these are actually watercolor brushes. They come from a brush pack made by Arcolution. Um, I'll link them down below. You can actually purchase this brush pack to support them. Uh, it's a really, really good brush pack. It's, it's loaded with so many different types of brushes. So this is the, uh, the watercolor brushes. Um, you'll see I'm just painting them in. Um, I'm trying to keep the bottom a little darker and have it sort of fade up. Uh, that's sort of how the, nat the sky naturally looks. Anyways, so um, that's what I'm trying to do and just paint that in until it looks good. And next we're going to use what's called the splatter brushes. These are still part of the Arcolution photo pack, or brush pack, sorry. And uh, I guess my thinking here, uh, or the idea I have, is that these splatters that are sort of painted in, um, sort of maybe emulate birds in the sky, or maybe they're just done for the sake of, you know, making the sky more complex and sort of have this visual interest as it's sort of escaping the canvas or kind of going off the boundaries of the sky that we've created. And the last one that we'll do um, when it comes to the brushes is we'll be using the sauna brushes. This is really awesome because you can just paint them in to get really quick context, or even a really quick narrative into your image really easy and seamlessly. Uh, it's much easier than pulling in PNG images. If you haven't purchased this pack, or if you don't intend to purchase this brush pack, you can actually find just cutouts of these uh, of these people anyways. So you can still make this image and still follow along. What I'm trying to do here is maybe weave in a narrative of people sort of playing in the, in the grass, um, people in the pool. But I think the advantage of, of brushing or using the brush tool here is that I'm able to do this really quickly. And um, this is really great for architecture students or if you're a design professional, um, trying to communicate your concepts and do it at a higher level of detail than just a sketch. This is a, this is a really great way to do it for sure. So now that we've finished painting in the entourage um, using this Arcolution brush set, I'll just move into a, a plain circle brush that I'm going to use to paint in a ball that I'm envisioning this character right here is sort of kicking and I'm going to paint in with the pen tool the actual arc that uh, we're suggesting the, the ball is, is, is moving through the air in, in that direction. And then by copying the ball's um, layer, we will add a motion blur effect to that copied layer and then lower the transparency and have that on top of the, the layer, um, the actual, the very first layer of the ball. And that will create a pretty good and convincing looking motion blur effect. So now that we're almost wrapped up here, the last thing I'll do besides just the basic housekeeping and organizing of my layers is I will go back to the base render uh, layers that I have 
just down here. If you haven't seen the first video, that was the video where I actually organized um, all these render layers, showed you how I use the different render channels from Lumion to mask out the background. Um, having said that, I'll just combine all those layers into a duplicated layer, and by using control and clicking on the preview of the layer, I'm able to select the entire um, mask of that layer. With that, we'll just fill it in solid using a solid pink color, and with that we can just set the blend mode to overlay and lower the opacity. And what this will do is just quickly color grade the background um, and blend it into the entire composition. And there we go, we're all finished. So as you probably already noticed, this one was really, really easy. Um, I know I've been saying that about all three uh, videos and each image that we made in these videos, but I feel like this is actually the easiest one, even though it was supposed to be the most detailed one. Once again, I didn't show how I created those de decals or those uh, those weathering overlays. So if you guys are interested in seeing that in a future video, let me know. But um, yeah, thanks so much for watching all these videos. Um, if you haven't already, please drop a like and uh, subscribe if you can. Really appreciate it and it helps out the channel. So uh, thanks.